<laughs> Why are we doing karate? We're doing karate because today's story is about karate. A very sad tale of how I used to do karate, but I dropped out of karate. So what makes this story actually so interesting? I mean, I've done a lot of sports in the past. Soccer, tennis, gymnastics. I think those are the ones that I remember the most. But karate was definitely one of those that really... Uh, it's you'll see why did I hate karate? No, did I love it? No, I was kind of just forced into it by my parents because at that age I think I was about 11 My parents wanted me to do something active because I was honestly just a little bit overweight So I ended up getting enrolled into karate and karate was fine for like the first three months I actually was okay with it. I loved it I was the average kid in the class, honestly. And what I mean by average was I wasn't the biggest, I wasn't the smallest, I wasn't the fattest. But after those three months, the kid that was bigger than me left and he stopped going to karate. And they started enrolling a whole bunch of really young small kids. And I, I became the tallest, biggest kid in that class. The disadvantage about being the tallest, biggest kid in the class, two disadvantages actually, two disadvantages. The first being the sensei will always pick you to demonstrate something. Hey, I'm gonna show you guys a takedown. It only makes sense if I pick the biggest kid in the class and nothing was more humiliating than just being tucking down over and over and always picked. Hey, let me guys, let me show you guys a counter. Uh, Tony, throw a punch at me. I throw a punch at him. He um, he hits hard. He doesn't go soft. He hits hard when he counters, and it hurt bad. And the thing is, I don't learn very much when they perform something on me. I'm a visual learner. I I'm more of an active learner where I have I have to do the action on the person rather and see it rather than having it done on me not seeing what happened to me and suddenly I'm on the ground. I stopped seeing improvement in my karate. But the other reason what was so bad about being the biggest kid is you have to control your hits. And as the biggest kid in the class, it is so easy to hurt little kids. And for some reason, the sensei thought it, it would be smart, the smartest thing to bring his daughter into the class, which was like, and she was like a year under the recommended age requirement for this class. She was super small. And what I mean by super small is, I think she was like four or five years old and I was like 11 and I was double her size, like height wise. And for some reason, the sensei thought it would be smart to par her and me up for a sparring match. And would you know, I didn't want to attack her because I'm fighting the sensei's daughter. How stupid would it be to hurt her? And well, the sensei walks up and he's like, Tony, throw a couple punches, do something. I mean, she's beating you up. So, okay, well, I'll, I'll do what you want. And I went ahead, I did a nice little light roundhouse kick. And I honestly, I tapped her head, like just tapped. Man, I don't know how much pressure I applied. I personally didn't feel like it was a lot of pressure at all. But she like, she started tearing up and she ran to her sensei and started bursting out crying. Holy crap, I gun did it now. What happened the following weeks was that the sensei started picking me for takedowns and, and target practice a lot more. Often, he would always give me that angry look like, hey, you hurt my daughter. And the worst part about it was when we brought out protection pads, the headgear, the chest gear, and the fists. Because of the protect, I hated the protect. I would always say, I would per I'd personally, I would recommend, I would say, let's not fight with the protection gear because his excuse with the protection gear was to hit harder, take down harder. And one day we put all the protection gear up and he says, Tony, come up here. I'm going to demonstrate takedowns and some attacks. And I knew because the protection gear, he hits a lot harder. And I sat there and I said, no, I don't want to participate in your showing. I want to sit here and learn. 
And he looked at me, he's like, you're disobeying my orders. And I said to him, I said, no, because you hurt me. Even with this protection gear, he said, yeah, he's like, you have, you've got protection gear, you're crazy. And I said, no, this protection gear gives you an excuse to hit me harder and I don't like it. And you know what? You know what he did? He said, for disobeying your sensei, go sit in the corner in, I don't know how the pose is called, but I'll do it. He said, go sit in the corner and for the rest, 40 minutes of class, I sat on my knees like that. Th you, this seems fine, but after 20 minutes, your body really starts killing you and you want to sit in a different position. I had to sit like that. I was so pissed. I was so furious that after that class, I, I literally confronted my parents and I said, I never ever want to go back to karate or not, karate's fine. That specific karate, because of that sensei, ever, ever again. And I was like ball in tears and I was shouting and screaming and like my parents could see the anger and frustration in me and they're like, okay, you don't have to go to that anymore. And I'm sharing the story because I feel like some people have also been through the same experience and I, or there's probably some people going through the same experience where the trainer is honestly just picking on them. And I, I want you to know that I've been there, it's the same place and I've, I've been so frustrated and when I did confront the trainer, I was punished for it. But it could be because I confronted the trainer the wrong way. What I should have done probably was tell my parents and have my parents confront him privately because if they did that nicely, I'm sure he would have just stopped choosing me. But I thought I was gonna be a big boy and I decided to confront him in front of the whole class, not personally to humiliate him, but just to stand my ground and to show him and everybody that I'm tired of being picked on. I definitely felt that I got my dignity back for standing up to him. And he did continue the, the showing the class on some other kids. And I got to sit out the entire class in the corner. But I don't think that would have been the right way. Like if you're ready to quit whatever activity you are because you're getting bullied at it, you, you might as well confront in front of everybody for fun. But if you really care about what you're doing, then you try to confront it personally. You don't want to settle this kind of issue in front of everybody because it's not gonna end great for either of you. And definitely try to confront the issue with some backup, with some other couple classmates who have seen you go through the same experience or your parents or your guardians who really will take care of you and get your back and will help you solve whatever issue you're going through rather than, you know, the way that I did it. All right, so that was just a quick little story of why I quit karate. And until then, this has been Tony Sticks and may you guys. I'm gonna do this one. Have a very roundhouse kick type of day. Whoa. That was a pretty good kick.